First time buyers for thermals out there. Let's talk about it. We have a lot of options here. We're going to break down the pros and cons of each one and where you really need to be focused. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We get a lot of first time buyers out there. We get a lot of questions in the email inbox every single day. And we have a lot of people who are investing in night vision, thermal, infrared lasers, so on and so forth. So here in Brush Meter Store, we are an FFL SOT. And one of the things that we really like doing in here in the shop is getting people squared away with uh, setting up weapons for all of their needs. Thermals are dominating the market right now, and I don't see that changing in any way, shape, or form. If you've seen uh, any of the hunting videos that are out there, if you've seen any of the footage coming from various areas of conflict around the world, you'll see that thermal technology has improved drastically over the past decade and it continues to get better and better and better here in brush reader store we have uh, a lot of options that range from entry level to what i consider to be professional grade equipment i've got several different options up here and if you're a first time buyer or maybe you've been in the thermal game for a while but you're looking to upgrade your equipment uh, lineup it can be a daunting task. All right, so let's break down first the three roles of thermal and where you're going to find thermal devices. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about some of the myths surrounding thermal. Uh, first of all, it's not the eye of Sauron. It's not going to be able to look through walls or any of that stuff that, you know, we get questions that are kind of off, off the wall like that pretty pretty randomly but what it does do is it detects heat signatures and when you're looking at the specs of various thermals that are on the market the two big things that you need to pay attention to well technically three uh first is the resolution of the core itself and these typically will come in four different flavors 256 which is kind of the entry level uh, very low end there you have 320 which is a step up from 256 but is still kind of in that entry level price the 384s which i think is where the smart money really is 640 where the bulk of your high end thermals are going to be and we also have 1280 units that are entering the market now as well <clears throat> so those uh that number is certainly something to pay attention to uh you also have your refresh rate and you have your heat sensitivity uh, that is on the heat sensor itself essentially the lower the number on the heat sensor the better and your refresh rate the higher the number is going to be better uh when you are Stepping up to something larger like this uh, Rico hybrid unit here from iRay, you're going to have a much better refresh unit because, or refresh rate rather, because the processor is going to be able to run faster in this. These are digital devices. There is a small microprocessor that's running in here, so it is kind of like a small computer. All right. Uh, moving on down the list of things to pay attention to with these, they typically are going to come in one of three different flavors. You're going to have a dedicated scope like this Rico here. You will have uh, clip on devices like this AGM, which uh, this is a Rattler C. Uh, the C stands for clip on. 
And then you have handheld devices, which are meant to be um, either used as a scanner. So that way, you know, if I'm running my weapon on a tripod, if I'm out coyote hunting, hog hunting, what, you know, whatever it is, I'm doing fixed position. I don't have to move the weapon around to use a handheld scanner. Uh, along with that, a lump in one that a lot of people know about, the RH25, kind of a, a multi-role device. And we're going to be talking about that one here in a second. If you're a first-time buyer, a lot of times people want one device to rule them all, right? To do all the things. And it's certainly understandable you're talking about a significant investment even on the low end of things with the 256 units, you're still talking about spending close to $1,000. Um, what I'll say is this, clip-on devices are meant to be used in front of whatever your standard optic on your weapon is. All right, so with that said, this setup here, uh, this is a prototype prismatic optic coming from Kyber Optics. Um, we're We've got these in production now. They're going to be available sometime in uh, uh, late Q1 of 2026. But with a clip-on device in front of it, now we are able to use our standard daytime optic, and we have our clip-on thermal, uh, which adds our thermal capability. I could use this as a standalone scanner device if I want to pop it off. And with thermals, you can use them day or night. That's another frequent question that people will have. Um, kind of answering the, the night vision versus thermal question, which we're going to be doing in a later video. These days, personally, I like rolling with a dedicated thermal scope. And let me explain why. Uh, when you have your zero on your optic, and there's a lot of people who are wanting to use clip-ons for a lot of reasons, and all of them are valid, uh, tactical applications, uh, maybe you really, really like the scope that you have on there. Uh, if you like your scope, you can keep your scope. And you really want to, uh, you know, just have an enhanced capability that you can pop on and off. Well, that's all uh, really cool. And uh, when you conceptualize that, it seems like that would work really well. One of the problems is, though, is you're going to introduce a deviation in your point of impact. And you need to know what that adjustment is, right? So you do have to take this to the range. You typically are going to have to re-zero your optic, even in some of the thermals that are on the market that advertise themselves as, you know, there, there's no point of impact shift. There's no zero shift. There is always going to be a zero shift, all right? That's just marketing fluff. Definitely going to happen. Uh, but that being said, you know, one other issue that I've run into doing a lot of coyote hunts is, you know, it's hot and humid in the summertime here in the south. And because of that, you're going to run into fogging of the lenses. If I'm running a scope, well, I've only got two lenses really to worry about here. With a clip on, I've now got four. Something to think about. All right. Moving on to a dedicated scope. Dedicated scope is, is really the way that, that I like to roll these days. Uh, this setup that we have here in the shop, uh, which I nicknamed the Caswell Coyote Rifle. Uh, this one is pretty simple setup, thermal optic. And um, you know, once you zero this thing, you get it on target. It's really, really hard to beat. A lot of your thermal scopes that you have on the market, though, don't have a way of putting on an external red dot or, you know, some sort of other aiming device, um, scope, what have you, if the battery in this or the electronics inside of it fail. Uh, one thing I'll say is you absolutely do get what you pay for in a thermal optic, just like with anything else. And um, having an alternative way of aiming on this is probably a good idea. Something like a 45-degree uh, offset red dot mounting like the MDO that we have uh, in here with Kyber Optics. You also have a place on this Rico Hybrid 50 where you could mount an MDO on top of this as well. 
uh, any other mini red dot. Um, I prefer, as I said, a dedicated scope setup these days. That's uh, kind of, it, it simplifies your weapon. I don't need to put uh, a lot of extra stuff on there. And there's a lot of conversation these days about passive aiming uh, with night vision, passive aiming uh, in limited visibility. This is definitely going to uh, give you that with a minimum weight penalty. Potential drawbacks with a standalone scope, obviously battery life is one of them. Uh, and the ability to pop this thing on and off. You're always going to have a shift in zero when you remove an optic and put it back on. I don't care what anybody tells you. That is a fact. All right, you're going to have a deviation in it somewhere. So have one rifle or maybe a dedicated upper that is your thermal setup and leave it there. Let's talk about handheld scanners. You know, we've got Armasite Sidekick right here, which is a pretty popular unit. That's the 320, the down market version of it. We do uh, move a lot of those, and they're fairly well received. This one is one that I think doesn't need any introduction, and uh, a lot of first-time buyers are attracted to units like the RH-25 from IRA here because they are kind of a jack-of-all-trades. They're going to do pretty much all the things like a Swiss Army knife. But like a Swiss Army knife, they do all the things not particularly well. Some of the drawbacks that you're going to have from this is a significantly smaller objective lens, meaning your image resolution is not going to be as good, even though you have a 640 core. Uh, that's definitely a factor in that. And when you compare these two devices here, uh, when you're behind the gun, there's no question, larger objective lens, you're going to be able to see things better. Your image quality is going to be significantly better. That being said, uh, as a multi-tool item, something that can wear many hats, something that I can take on and off of a weapon, you do have a clip-on mode on this, as well as its ability to be a standalone scope. And there's plenty of people that are mounting these on Wilcox mount and running them on helmets as well. Uh, so as a first-time buyer, if you're trying to get the maximum utility out of your thermal optic, that might be the route that you want to go. And a lot of people uh, definitely take that route. For me, as somebody who runs thermals quite a bit, um, I lean towards a dedicated scope because of the image quality, because of its simplicity, and because of its reliability. That's kind of where... Uh, these days, that's where my head is. If you find yourself in a tactical role, if you're part of an entry team, you, you, uh, your weapon is kind of a, a general purpose setup, this is where your clip-on optics going to come in. That being said, uh, we are we get a mountain of questions about all this. We're more than happy to help you answer all of them. You can hit us up at brushbeater.store. You can check out all the options that we have in stock over there from all the major manufacturers of thermal uh, that are on the market today. That said, folks, it was great to be with all of you. Hope that this video has been informative, and we're here to help you make an informed decision on what to purchase. God bless, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Zensi Scout out.